want to investigate this line with you because he's very clearly outlining triads, using chromatic lines to connect, connect those triads and also it's a cool idea for substituting chord changes in a C blues and we're going to have a close look at everything that's happening there. So first of all, let's take a step back and really start with basic stuff. <laughs> Very basic stuff. We have a C triad and we have a F triad and we are in C major so the C is our tonic the F is the four chord and we're going to transform the F into a four minor chord. And those triads are close position triads and I'm just going to play them in some other inversions so maybe this is going to be useful for my lick later on. So if you're practicing a lick right, always be sure that you know the chords that are played behind the lick so that you can have an analysis of the notes in relationship to the chords. But before we get into the nitty gritty of the chord, I want to discuss playing chromatic fingerings, a chromatic line on the guitar, which can be kind of tricky, right? The guitar is a chromatic instrument since from one fret to the next it's always a half tone step. So let's play a chromatic line starting on the C. So we can play with one finger, which is not really handy. We can play it like this using all four fingers and then moving the last one. Or we can try to play it on two strings starting with the middle finger still the same line, right? So there are many possibilities. There are many possibilities to play a chromatic line on your guitar. Please check it out because this is definitely something that you're going to need when you're playing bebop lines. So now we have two things, right? We have the triads, the shapes of the triads that we can visualize on our fretboard, which is going to come in really handy in a second. And we have been checking out a chromatic line a little bit. So let's start with the first part of the lick. We can visualize the F major triad. Maybe play, play the C up here as well. It's really like an F major triad, right? Just we're starting on the G which is not in the shape, but anyways, we're going to play it. And then just the shape, A, and that's our F major triad. And now we're going to connect to the F minor triad, right, with our chromatic line, to an F minor triad. And now we're going to pick the F minor triad. So we can really visualize an F major triad going to an F minor triad. And if you start transposing stuff, I really like to transpose stuff because it helps me just like more play from my intuition, hearing the line in my head and trusting the fingers that they will find their way. And then we are on the F minor and we're playing like an 11 on the F minor and then 11, right? Do you know this shape? Very cool, right? In this case, it's just outlining the line to the five of the C major chord. And again, I can see a C major shape, maybe with a G in the bass. And then I just think root, chromatic, double chromatic approach to the third and ending with a six, with the interval of a six. I really like this ending. I 
just take a, a snippet of the leg and just practice it by shifting it across the fretboard, already transposing it, hearing it in different keys. It's a great help. And then I can try to do the same thing in one position. So right, I'm playing C. Okay, I'm thinking C, starting on the five. Cycle of fifths, I'm playing F major, starting on the uh, five. Flat, five, staying in the same position. Good. E flat, starting on the five. Ah. And at a certain point, of course, the shapes are going to repeat itself. In this way, you're going to really hear the line. And if you repeat on doing this exercise, which is a very good exercise, you will come to the point where your fingers go to the next note before you even think about it, right? So just think about the chord and the note that the phrase starts on and then transposes. And yes, so now we have the F major, the F minor and the C. And the question remains, where does he, does he use it in his C blues? And he's using it in bar four and five. We have C blues. to the four, right? F7. Here he's just playing a plain F triad. And then instead of playing an F sharp diminished, right, we very often suspect that it's going to be F7, F sharp, C. He's playing an F minor chord in bar six, like F. So we have a really cool substitution and when we improvise we can for a change play a four minor chord in bar six. So I'm going to try to do that. I'm starting in bar one, starting with not playing so much so that I know where I am and then I'm going to try I'm going to try to outline those new chords. <laughs> try to play some triad shapes, right? Like I checked out and just trying to play the triad shapes. One, two, three, four. on a lick. First try to learn it by heart, analyze it, 
in relationship to its root, really understand it, but then also try to do something different with it, right? You could also think, okay, I'm just going to use an F major triad, F minor triad here, play something different, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Right, or something here. So I hope I could inspire you to practice a little bit the blues, that's always a great foundation for jazz improvisation, and check out those chord substitutes. See you next week, bye!